many times I feel like we get towards the end of the month and we call it the end of the month, right? We're like, oh, it's almost the end of the month. And it really isn't. And I feel like we get in our own way and in our own head. Um, so I want you to think about anyone you know in this industry and, and hear me out. There's always a thin line in telling y'all things, but making sure you don't compare yourself. Okay. So anytime I tell you something, use it as inspiration, use it as motivation. Don't compare yourself. That's stupid. Right. I hear these stories and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Like I, it makes me know it's possible. It doesn't discourage me. So I want you to think about someone that you've heard that's come in and killed it in like 13 days. Or think about like your best 13 days in this industry. 13 days is a long freaking time. It truly is a long time. I know girls that have come in and gone 12K um, in 13 days. I know girls that have come in and gone 4K. I know there's just so much that can happen in 13 days. So if you already have in your mind, oh, it's the end of the month, like um, I call bullshit, okay? You need to be thinking, we have 13 entire days left in this month. That is a long, long time. Yep, there's Ken. She went 12K in 12 days. So it doesn't mean beat yourself up. It doesn't mean play the comparison game. What it means is play the ins inspire game. Play the inspiration game. How are you going to wake up tomorrow? How are you going to go to bed tonight thinking, oh, this month is half over or, oh, we still have half of this month left, okay? Um, what are you going to commit to? I would, you know, so many people ask me, what's my next goal? What do I do next? Guys, it depends on where you're at in your journey. My next goal is different than your next goal, but I'll tell you the first goal anybody, anybody should have is to be thriving for free. Um, you should, your goal should be, and that may be your only goal for the next 13 days. That's okay. But here's what I want to tell you. If you've already said, like, well, there's no way I can go 12K, but what if M uh, McKenzie's watching you and you stop showing up? I want personally people to join me that outperform me, right? Wouldn't we all want that? Wouldn't you all want that? That's not a crazy thing to think or to put out into the universe. I want my team to run circles around me, but I never stop leading from the front. But I love whenever I have several girls on my team that out enroll me and I, <laughs> We have friendly competition and I'm like, you beep. I'm like, you are like killing it today. And we, we have that love, that healthy um, competition, but we don't compare. So you may not think you can do it, but you don't know what you're capable of. You just have to tell yourself, okay, I know that next win is right around the corner. And that next win may be the person that can out enroll you. That next win may be the mom whose lights are about to be turned off. You don't know. I had no idea Mackenzie was going to come in and do what she did. I had no idea a lot of my girls were, but I also know there are a lot of people that don't come in and blow up like that, that come in and they are steady and they get where they want to go. Okay. Um, so are you thriving for free? If you're thriving for free, can you, um, comment? And if not, that needs to be your first goal. That needs to be your first goal. If you're not thriving for free already next month, that needs to be your very next goal, like tonight, tomorrow, because you want your products for free, right? We all want our products for free. Um, are you sampling? Are you sampling? Guys, sample your way to 200K. I cannot say that enough. Sample your way to 200K. Mm. I might put Logan on the spot. Logan, are you on here? Um, I don't know if she's on here. If you're on here and you want to unmute yourself, you can unmute yourself. But I know Logan samples like the crap out of people. Um, the reason why you want to do that is because you're getting giving people a chance to try before they buy. I love our company because a lot of companies um, – you know, you try their product for one day and you can't feel a difference. You try their product and you're like, okay, like I need like 16 more of this. And then you've lost people with ours. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you're a day one thriver or not. You can feel something. You can feel more energy. You can feel more rested. People around you can notice you have got to dig in 
with the people you sample with and figure out what's changed for them in that day one. It, it doesn't mean that they're going to wake up feeling like Superman. I mean, I did. It doesn't mean that they're going to lose five pounds in 48 hours. Some people do. You know, you've got to dig in with them. It may mean that they got up and played with their kids. It could mean so many different things. So you really have to be communicating with your samplers and you've really, really, you've got to be sampling. You know, I was so afraid to say that before I joined this business. So afraid to say, sell samples, sell samples. Guys, that's how I got to 200K and I'm holding myself more accountable. I just talked to a girl. That's what I was doing whenever I had y'all muted. She's like, when should I do my products tomorrow before um, Camp Gladiator or afterwards? So I, I'm pushing myself to get back out there and to sample. If you are new, I know a lot of girls that are like hitting the ground running. They're like, I'm out of products. What do I do? You need to get with your sponsor and ask them about a $400 package or an $800 package and why that would be beneficial. I am not telling you um, go and spend a ton of money. What I'm telling you is if you are running out of samples, you're making that money right back. You need to talk to someone and figure out the most efficient way to sample. I know I have some girls that I'm about to talk to tonight about the $800 pack, not to make money. It's not about me. It's like they're running out of product. So they need to sell samples. And so they are investing in their business. They're selling those samples. They're making that money right back. But I can't tell you how much sampling has changed my business. If you're not good at it, get with your upline, get with your sponsor, talk to them. They will help you come up with some different ideas on how to sample. Anyone who's not ready to buy is ready to sample. That's got to be your mentality. If they are telling you that they are interested and they're not ready to buy, then they're ready to sample. They're either not sure about the cost. They're either not sure that it'll work. They're any objection someone gives me, I can sell them a sample. I can always sell them a sample because if it's too expensive, okay, let's get you on a sample pack. They'll see the value. They'll see the value right after that. If they're not sure it'll work, they'll see the value. So get people on a sample pack. If they're not ready to buy, dang it, they are ready to sample, but you've got to have samples. Number one. Um, no, I never offer a sample first ever. That's what I do. Second. So I never offer a sample first. I do that second whenever someone's like, oh, I just don't know. Then I'm like, you know what? I get it. Let's start you with a sample pack. Um, so that's what I always do. I am going to challenge you to mail out four samples this week. Mail out four samples this week. There is no reason why you cannot mail out four samples this week. Um, it's not hard. You just have to be intentional. You have to be intentional with how you're talking to people. You have to be intentional with um, following up. You just, you have to be intentional with sampling. Mackenzie, do you want to talk about sampling a little bit? I know whenever you came in, you blew up with sampling and you were mailing samples out left and right. I know Kenzie's on here. Hi, hi. Yeah, thank sorry. you. I'm just trying to get away from my loud kids. <laughs> You're um, fine. Thank you. Yeah. So whenever I came in, I um literally just started sampling like crazy. Um, I was promoting the product before I was actually a promoter, and like I tell people that all the time because that's how good I felt. Um, and I just wanted to tell everybody about it, and I wanted it to to get it in the hands of um everybody. So my son was in daycare at the time. And, or not, he wasn't, I'm sorry. He just got out of daycare, but his daycare lady um, always complained in the mornings when I would drop him off about how tired she was. And um, she popped into my head for some reason. And I just messaged her on Facebook and I was just like, girl, like I have something crazy for you. Um, let me tell you about it. Like, if you'll listen to me, let me tell you about it. And she was like, yeah, sure. Because a lot of people, you guys, um, you know, I always tell my girls when they, whenever they first start, like we don't cold message, no, but reaching out to like, close friends and family and stuff that is like super big for your business because you don't have you know your pack right away a lot of people don't but letting people know that you have samples coming in letting people know what you're doing letting people know um hey i've got this stuff here's what it does and it's going to be here in a few days um let me get you on a sample pack when it comes in you know you can pre-sell your samples i tell girls to do that all the time um, just let people know what you're doing. And she literally was, was my very first promoter and it was from a sample pack. 
And I went VIP 800 in just a few days after signing and every single one of my promoters and customers were from sample packs. Not one of them was a family member. Not one of them was like a really close friend. It was all people that had tried a sample pack and literally messaged me like the day after and was like, Oh my gosh, like, what do you have your hands on? This is crazy. Um, and then like, I, I really did go very fast. I blew up and I feel like mainly it was because every single person that I gave a sample pack to in the beginning, like was just like, Holy crap. Everyone was really, really thrown back. So now, um, you know, like Court said, if someone is like a little hesitant on price or if they're a little hesitant because they're not sure it's going to work, I'm always like, girl, let me hook you up on a sample pack. And I know that Court has talked about this before, but if you have someone, um, you know, I wouldn't just do this to any and everybody because you don't want to lose money or anything like that. But if you have someone and you feel like they would be an absolute bomb diggity dot com at this and you think that they would just blow it out of the water and you're just 100% real with them and you're like girl I know you would kill this um let me send you a sample pack for free like let me get you a sample pack in the mail um I've had a few girls that I've done that with and I'm very persistent on sample packs you guys and $25 is not you know it is to some people but if you're like girl it's only $25 and I can get you three full days of three different products majority of people are going to be like holy crap um I know one of my girls Whitney who is like killing the game she came in and she has absolutely killed the game she um I wanted to get her on a sample pack so bad and I was like let me send you a sample pack like let me send you one just let me send you one tell me what you think and she made it, she put it in her post the other day and she was like, okay, it was $25. Let me just get this girl off my back <laughs> is literally what she said. But whenever it came in, she's like, holy crap. Um, so sample, sampling is huge, you guys. Like just sample. I was trying to read this message. How can you pre-sell samples effectively 10 months into the business? Would you approach it the same way? Um, no, because you already, well, I say pre-sell if you don't have your samples yet. Like if you don't have um, your samples like in front of you. Um, I say that to girls who just start because they can say, hey, I just placed my order. It's on the way. I have samples coming. Let me go ahead and get you hooked up with one. Um, I hope that makes sense. Elizabeth, I think, is going to pop on here and talk about samples also. Maybe she can weigh in a little bit. Court yeah. popped me way off guard, so sorry. <laughs> no, thank you. I know Alexis is going to talk about it, too. Um, I think, personally, you can pre-sell samples no matter what. It's all about how you present it, um, period. Like, you can just say, hey, I have um, products on the way. Um, you know, do you want to buy a sample pack? I don't think that it's like anything. A lot of like children's boutiques, they pre-sell clothes before they order them from their uh, wholesaler. So it's all about you delivering that message with confidence. And um, I don't know. I don't think it matters how long you've been in the business. Hold on. I'm one of the people who, oh, you, are you saying you didn't blow up in the business and you haven't earned free product credit? I feel like nine out of 10 people who sample order because they know how they feel. So, um, Alexis, I know Alexis is on here. You can unmute yourself, babe. Hey, hey. Hey, hold on. I'm looking for you. She is good. She's always mailing out samples always. Okay. Start talking, Alexis. There you go. There I am. Hey. Okay. So yeah, I wanted to uh, touch on actually sampling for couples. This is something that I have found greatly, greatly um, increases the, I don't want to say chances, but yeah, chances of um, people ordering. Um, I do find when couples sample together, it does a couple of things. Number one, I feel like they're able to discuss what exactly it is that they're feeling with each other. Because, you know, when, when we come in and we tell them how we feel, we're, we're an outside source. But when they're talking with their spouse or their, you know, their um, significant other person in their life, they trust them fully. And so for them, they're getting good feedback. Number one, they're able to um, explain how they're feeling. They're able to kind of hold each other accountable, right? Um, because I know for me, for my husband, I have to put his capsules next to his bed in order for him 
to be able to, you know, be like, oh crap, I got it. I got to thrive today. Um, so it kind of does the same thing. Um, you know, how many times have we sampled and then you've asked or, and, and people are actually buying the samples and you ask, Tommy, sorry. Um, you've asked them, Hey, so what's going on? How are you feeling today? And they haven't even started. It kind of gets frustrating because you're like, oh my gosh, you've got your hands on something amazing. So, hey, Tommy, sorry, my dog's just, I don't even know what he's barking at. But, um, yeah, I feel like if any anytime I am sampling with an individual, I always ask, what about your, and, you know, and that's when I throw in, you, you know, your boyfriend or your, your girlfriend or whatever. And I always try to connect it to that other person because I feel like it's a really good time. And a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, you know what? They do need to lose weight too. And then that's when I go into and explain to them a lot about, you know, why I like to sample with couples. So I love I think that. I love yeah, that. I think it's something so great to do. I actually, I have a girl that lives in the neighborhood and she's getting married, of course. So she started thriving for the sole purpose of losing weight. And, um, her and her, her and her husband are getting ready to get married and sold both of them a sample and both of them ordered. So, you know, it does end up working out in the long run because now you are opening up the doors to so many other people that that really didn't even intend on thriving but then their spouse or you know whatever boyfriend girlfriend are now um throwing in those comments or throwing in those um um those thoughts in their yeah, head you and know? it's not you as the salesperson it's somebody exactly. that's not trying to sell something that's noticing it and doing it with them yes that's yes, brilliant absolutely. Yeah. That is so, so smart. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, absolutely. let me see. There was a question. How do you start the conversation about samples? So for me, Rachel, I, uh, let me hold on. Let me switch this. I don't, I put that on my story. Um, sorry, I'm trying to fix the screen. Hold on. I put that either in my story and I say like I have sample packs or I, um, you know, video me on Instagram, like packaging them up so people can see. And then I let them vote or them ask me, um, or I may go live and have like four packs available. And I'm like, Hey, I have four packs available. Or when someone says it's too expensive or when someone says, Oh, I don't know if it'd work for me. There should be, natural conversations happening in your business. If you are, you know, consistently and, and you're really disciplined in your business, you should have an opportunity to sample every week um, without having to cold message anybody. That is my opinion. Um, let me see. Um, I don't, I think that, I mean, I've sent it to like Canada and stuff, but I don't have a lot, a big network in other countries. And I'm not saying you shouldn't explore other countries, but whenever I was at Eric Warre, one of the things he said is it is very, very, um, it's a very small chance that you will ever grow a, a large team in a different country that it's just very, very hard to do that. Now, I know, like, I have a girl in Canada. The chances are a lot better that, like, Elizabeth is going to grow a team in Canada or this or that. So I know some people want, um, you know, they want, what do you mean by it? what if you live in two countries? Um, okay. I know a lot of people want to grow in all of these countries, but I always say you should start with your market where it is. I um, mean, especially after hearing Eric Warre say that. Um, if you live in Mexico and yeah, then you absolutely should. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just don't, um, think people should chase teams in other countries trying to build them it, unless it happens naturally. That's what I mean. Um, yes. If that's your natural market, Elizabeth, do you want to share about sampling? Sure. And I'll just quickly, I think to clarify Julie's question, because she's in Mexico, but she's got people in the U S cause she lives there. 
half the year. Gotcha. So if you were if you were doing sampling, would you use credits and just and do it that way on the online version or actually send them internationally? I would all I never ever suggest um doing the online version because of the way they're packaged. It doesn't make sense. It's like I don't even know. I'd have to go look at it, but I will tell you I have never done it online because the way they are packaged, it doesn't make sense. Got it. Um, okay, so then uh, sampling for me, I love sampling out because you A, you get to have that conversation with somebody who is feeling it, is taking them, rather than explaining it to somebody who you're just explaining it as three steps. They can actually, they've gone through it. Um, they're much more likely to order if they've had that chance to actually feel it for themselves and how lucky are we that we have vitamins that you can truly feel a difference um, right away within a week and one thing that I've had success with is doing giveaways where you have one winner for a sample pack and then you know whether you offer it five dollars off or ten dollars off or whatever then everybody else who has entered your giveaway um, or commented or liked it, then you have that chance to go to those people um, and start that, start that conversation and either offer them a discounted sample pack. Um, but that way you have people coming to you um, who have obviously shown interest and even giving them, you know, half price on a sample pack. I strongly believe in, in putting value on those and not just giving them out for free. Um, but again, similar to what Courtney has said in the past, you know, take that case by case. But for the most part, when you attach a value to something, people, it's not just gonna sit on their counter um, and collect dust. They're actually gonna see value in it and take it. Um, and then when you're, when you're sampling, just make sure that you're following up and asking them how, how it's going, if, rather than you kind of like waiting until a week later, like follow up with them on day one, day two, and. Hey, how is your how is your day going? Are you more productive? Or um, I know I've got some mom friends, some fellow mom friends. It's like, hey, how's how's the afternoon treating you with naps and dinner time and stuff? And more often than not, it's like I actually got through so much today. I don't know what's in this. Um, I sampled out to a mom friend of mine at CrossFit, and the next day she's like, holy crap! I don't know what's in here, but like I feel amazing. So. I love sampling. I think it's an awesome, awesome way to go. Thank you. So, okay, what I would say to answer. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Thank you. I'm muted. Thank you so much. <laughs> I strongly believe that, um, oh no, you heard help me. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was a kid. I strongly believe that you cannot establish value in somebody else's health. You can't. And you can't. And you cannot waste your time there. Nobody is a waste of time, but you have to know how to use your time efficiently. If I talk to you about a sample, if you hear it in my voice and you don't want to buy it, then I can't sell it. To you. You cannot sell somebody a solution for a problem that they don't think they have and you need to move on. You know, some of you are saying, well, people think it's too expensive. Then talk to more people. You need to talk to new people. Who are you talking to? I don't talk anybody into anything. I never will. That's not my job. I want people, I always say you want to be hunted, not the um, hunter. So if you feel like you're getting annoying or you're getting pushy, then you are spending way too much time talking to people that don't want this. And you have to remember that it's not personal. You have to remember that our product works for anyone, but you also have to remember that not everyone values their health, period. They just don't, and that's okay. I mean, well, I don't really think it's okay, but that's not something you can deal with. Like my parents don't thrive, my sister doesn't thrive. Hardly anyone in my family thrives, right? It sucks, I wish they would, but at the end of the day, like 
they've got to value that. My, my mom's got to give up driving through McDonald's every morning and to take care of herself. I can't do that for her. So I don't get pushy or annoying. I literally don't talk to them about it. I go find people that are ready to make a change. Tired moms that don't want to be tired. People that are struggling with their weight that don't want to be on 17 pills three times a day, right? Like those are the people you need to find. And if you feel like you're beating your head against the wall, then you need to move. You need to move your feet. Um, so sampling can be so amazing, but don't get caught up on it. Let it be a good thing. Don't turn it into a negative or a pushy thing at all. So I'm going to just go over some of my notes that I took when I was listening to some stuff today. So success does not equal talent or destiny. Some people think that my success is because I'm talented or this is destiny. No, it's not. Six, you, you're mitigating, you are taking away, you are pretending like struggle doesn't exist. No one is entitled to winning in this company. The people that win work, period. The people that win, the people that are successful, it's not because they're talented like a football player. It's not because they can sing. It is because they work. They are disciplined. They are committed. They get up and they are committed to changing lives every single day. It is not just because they are like, so I have some talent that you don't have. Victory is a product of a fight, period. Victory and success are products of fights and struggles. So if you're feeling that, if you're feeling out of place, if you're feeling like you're struggling, that's good. We don't need to turn it into a bad or into a negative. Um, when it doesn't feel good, will you push or will you fold? Will you push through that hard time to get the success you want or will you fold? Nobody, I know we, we hear things sometimes, but it's when they truly mean something, okay? Think of the mountaintop. We all know the old saying, no one falls at the top of a mountain, right? The road from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain is going to have struggles. It's going to have potholes. That's normal. Struggle is part of this. Being told no is part of this. If you don't like that, leave. I don't mean that rude. You got to like that. You got to like to get knocked down and to get back up and to be like, yeah, like, let's go again. Today's a new day. If not, if you don't like that, you'll never be successful. You've got to embrace that fight and embrace that struggle. Um, struggle's gorgeous. That's what makes people great and not average. But 99% of you will stop at your struggles. You'll stop at your struggle. You'll never see that gorgeous fight, that victory, that success because of that struggle. But most people never experience success. I mean, yes, granted, there are a few people that are, I like to call them born lucky. I don't know. Like, there's not a lot of them you know, they have their own struggles, right? But not a lot of people become financially successful without struggling. But most people stop as soon as they taste struggle. You cannot stop as soon as you taste struggle. You have to know that's part of it. That's part of the journey. Um, you need to look at it as an opportunity and not as a stop sign. Your struggle is an opportunity to learn. I always think, what is this prepping me for that I can teach my team one day? How can I eliminate this struggle for them in the future? Or how will I be able to empathize with them whenever they are going through this same thing, right? But struggle's there. You got to embrace that shit. That's like getting married and thinking that, um, oh, well, if you find your soulmate, then you'll never fight. No, that is not what marriage looks like. That's not what a friendship looks like. That's not what your relationship with your kids look like, right? It's part of it. It is part of your journey. Um, okay, hold on. Uncomfortable is necessary. You've got to get uncomfortable. I don't know what makes you uncomfortable, but you got to figure it out and you've got to go there. Um, what hurts now? That's the very thing that is your story. Your uncomfortableness your struggle, your, um, your fight, all of that, the failures, that's your story. Without that, you're boring. Without that, you're just someone else that woke up lucky, that's talented, right? That's not how this works. What did you fight through? What part of your struggle have you pushed through? That's what you need to share with other people. 
my notes are like crazy because we were taking off as I was writing this. So hold on. When we are grateful, we give more to what we are doing. When we are grateful, we give more to what we are doing. And guess what? You get more. It, it's like, there are some things I can't really verbalize or explain, but think about it in relationships. Think about it at a, a, a J-O-B. The harder you work, you're going to, you know, you love what you do as a waitress. You're going to get a bigger tip. You have a shitty attitude. You're not. When you put things out into this world and you're grateful, the world repays you. Call it karma. Call it Jesus. Call it whatever the hell you want to call it. But it is the law of attraction. You're grateful for your husband because he does the dishes and you tell him and you give him a kiss and you love on him. You're going to get more of that. He's going to do more of the dishes because he feels appreciated. It's the same thing. If you are grateful for the small things, you will attract the bigger things in life. But some of you are not grateful for your struggle. You're not grateful for where you're at. You have to learn to be grateful for where you are. Some of you are holding on so tight um, to what you have because you're afraid to fail that you can't open your hands for what God is trying to give you. And I've told a lot of you this story. I was so afraid to close my daycare because I was afraid of disappointing the parents. I was afraid I wouldn't make enough money. I was afraid. And I let fear let me hold on to that daycare for two months longer than I should have. The week I let go of that daycare, my check was $28,000 for the week. I needed $2,800 to replace daycare. But I literally, like, I literally had no more hours in the day. But God kept saying, like, trust me, trust me, trust me. And I thought, what's the freaking worst that can happen? You know, I had, I let go. I let go. I called the parents. They cried. One of them had to quit her job. It sucked. I let people down. But I put me first. And I let go of mediocre. I let go of that safety net and I jumped into the unknown and y'all, I'm not telling you go quit your job and you'll make $28,000. What I'm telling you is you have to be grateful for where you're at and you have to trust that there's more. You just have to keep moving your feet. You have to keep moving your feet. Frozen people do not make progress. And so many of us freeze when we get scared. We freeze whenever we see an obstacle, we freeze. No, go freaking face it head on. Um, go and, and, you know, tackle that obstacle. That excites me. Think about it like this. Y'all know I love sports. I love sports. How fun is it if you're a coach or a player and you're playing like, this is, I, I think of my husband. Football season comes around, right? And it's the first game. And he's like, okay, they're going to put in their shitty players. They either know they're going to win or they know they're going to lose already, right? Because it depends on who they're up against. Like, that's boring. Don't put me in. I've, I've always said in my career, don't put me in. And I, would, I don't want to walk off home run. I want my team to bunt. I want my team to slide in head first with broken arms, with cuts, scrapes, crying, because there was struggle. How boring is it for a walk-off home run or to slaughter a team? No one wants to play that game and no one wants to watch that game. That doesn't teach you anything in life, right? I want to fight for that next victory because it feels freaking awesome. Do you know how good it feels, my story, to have lost everything? I mean, we lost everything. You know how good that feels? Do you know how grateful I am today for that struggle? But back then, I resented that struggle. What I'm telling you right now is if you are walking through a struggle, that is your story. But you have to keep walking because if you pitch a tent and hang out there, you're never going to get to that next victory, right? You have to let that be a stepping stone. You have to practice gratitude. You have to. Um, okay, hold on. Do you have a victim mentality? When things don't go your way, do you fold? Do you throw a fit? Do you cry? Do you pout? Do you freeze? You know who does that? Two-year-olds and three-year-olds. How many of you have acted like a two- or three-year-old? I have. I have. I've thrown myself on the floor and cried 
whenever I, I wasn't enrolling, I, I was, you know, maybe I should go work at Target. And my husband's like, what? Sorry, if there's kids, he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Right? Get up get up. I mean, that what you want to tell your two-year-old sometime, like, what the F is wrong with you? You're tired, go take a nap, right? But they can't rationalize. Are you being rational with yourself whenever you, you know, don't get what you want when you want it? Are you acting like a two-year-old? Are you becoming a victim? The not fair mentality, do you know what that is? That's selfish. That is the most selfish mentality you can have. And I'm not telling you you're a selfish person. I don't think anyone wakes up and says, oh, that's not fair. You know, I don't like Susie. She promoted faster than me. But if you're thinking why her and not me, then you're thinking she doesn't deserve it. Instead, you should be thinking if her, then me. If them, then why not me? What can you learn from those people? What can you learn from that situation? But you're not a victim, damn it. Like, do not treat yourself like that. Um, you're not helpless. You're not weak. And if you view yourself as that, you won't ever change a damn thing about your life, no matter what it is. So there's always a way to win. Always. But you have to position yourself to win. There's always a way for the shorter team to win in basketball. There's always a way for the underdog to win in football. There's always a way to win. But the number one thing you have to do is show up. You can never win. You can never be successful if you just stop. Guys, there is nothing special about me. Nothing. I have people that are like, oh my God. And I'm like, you have no clue. Like there is nothing different about me than you, except for, I know what it's like maybe to have my lights turned off. I know what it's like to not be able to pay my mortgage for two months and going, holy shit. And my grandmother sent me a check in the mail by the grace of God. I know what it's like to be on food stamps. I know what it's like to be cussed out at the WIC office. I know what struggle feels like. And I refuse to ever live there ever again. That's the only difference. I needed this like I needed air to breathe. We all do, but it's all in your perspective. It's all in, do you see this as an opportunity? So my biggest thing is, where's your passion? Where's your passion? If your passion is to make money, you need to get out of here. Go, go do some soul searching. Yeah, I love a big bank account. Yep, I love my Louis Vuitton, but that is not why my feet hit the ground in the morning. My feet hit the ground in the morning because I am passionate about helping other people. I am passionate about having my bills on auto ship. I am passionate about, like, I don't know if you saw my post. I just paid two more months of my grandfather's mortgage. I've paid his mortgage four times this year. I'm not telling you that to brag. I'm telling you that because my grandfather woke up one day, needed two knee replacements, went in for surgery, and also found out he has pancreatic cancer. My grandmother's been dead for 15 years. My grandfather still works. He has no money. Like, what would happen to him? His house would be foreclosed. To me, I don't even blink now. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because I'm blessed because I positioned myself to win, not just for me. So if you're passionate about making money, that's not deep enough. That's boring. You need to be passionate about changing this world. How do you want to leave uh, your footprint on this world. You know, it's hit me really hard lately. My grandparents, they're millionaires. Okay. Cool. Right. My grandmother's in the nursing home. It costs $6,000 a month for my grandmother to be in the nursing home. She's like 80 something times that by two, a million dollars doesn't go very far. Does it? That's with no therapies. That's with nothing else. That's with her not having her laundry done. Nothing. So you have to really think about a way bigger picture than money in this world. And so what are you passionate about? What, like, why do your feet hit the ground? Your feet are never going to hit the ground because you make $10 whenever you sign somebody up on three steps with Thrive. You'll give up. You'll fold. But if you're passionate about something way bigger than you, I wrote on my dream board this uh, year that I wanted to pay someone else's mortgage. I didn't write I wanted to pay off my house or anything. I said, I want to pay someone else's mortgage. I've paid five mortgages for other people this year, right? I don't tell you that because I feel cool. I tell you that because I'm proud because I've positioned myself to win, right? I am passionate about helping people that can't help themselves. Not that have pitched a tent and living in a pity party that truly can't help themselves because of, you know, my grandfather's ill, things like that. That's why I get up and I still work so hard every single day. So where is your passion? What is your purpose? What do you want to become? 
what do you want to become? I do not want to be, Courtney was known because she was the most popular vitamin slinger on the corner. I want to be known. I want my kids to remember. I want my family to remember. I want my friends to remember that I had such a big and giving heart that no one around me hurt. No one around me struggled. And the people that did struggle knew that there was a different way. That's what I want to be known for. What do you want to be known for? Um, getting what you want requires you to be the author of your life instead of a reader of a book of your life. I want you to think about that. How many of you are sitting there just reading the book of your life? How many of you are freaking writing the next chapter? How many of you are writing the next sentence? How many of you are writing the next paragraph instead of just reading it? I went for years just reading the next chapter of my book. Get married, go to college, graduate, get a big girl job, go get another degree, go get another degree, have children, right? It just kind of was, just it evolved. No, no. Where, where did I write in there? You know, when do you stop and say, no, the next chapter of my life is I'm going to open a nonprofit. The next chapter of my life is I'm going to volunteer 20 hours a week because I'm a full-time stay-at-home, work-from-home mom. Like, where, where does that chapter come in? It comes in when you decide it comes in. That's where it comes in. But you have to show up. You have to show up and you have to decide that you're the author of the next chapter. Your book's not written, right? Your book is not written. Um, so I want to ask you this. Do you spend more than one minute a day around people who don't energize your vibe? You shouldn't. You shouldn't spend, I don't give a shit who they are. I don't care if they're your mom, you're your, they're your dad. You know, I hear so many times you only get one mom and one dad. Yeah, but you're not collateral damage to your family. You're not collateral damage to your friends. You're not collateral damage for people that are poison. You're responsible for what you put in your life, what you put in your children's life, what you, what you surround yourself with. Do you spend more than one minute with someone, not just that's like, oh, cool. Like, let's go hang out. No. Do they energize your vibe? Do they make you a better person? Do they give more to your vibe? If they don't, life's too short, guys. You're not obligated to go have dinner with anyone. You're not obligated to go hang out with anyone. You're not obligated to be around and be involved with anyone that doesn't make you better. That's a freaking choice. That is a choice. I have straight up looked at my parents and been like, you are negative. Your energy Fs me up. It Fs me up. I love you, but I'm not doing it. It's okay. It's okay to have boundaries. It's okay to only want to be around people that make you better. So you have to decide right now, what does your life look like? My life two years ago did not look like that. That's why I'm sharing that with you. I was obligated to people. I had people that were, you know, complacent. No, I want someone that makes me dream so freaking big in my life. I want some, don't y'all? Don't you want a friend like that? And, and not the friend that's like, you know, sitting there after, I always think of this one friend I had after a few beers and he was like, oh, we could take over the world. Not like bullshit conversations, like for real, like. I'm going to make you level up conversations, right? That's the kind of company you need to keep. Because if not, you were just poisoning your mind. Um, the difference in between those who will and those who won't, that they are those of you that decide that you will never have a victim mentality, ever. And it's so easy to have a victim mentality, right? So like someone cuts you off in the morning, right? And it's like, Oh, uh, here we go. Right. My husband was like that. He used to be the biggest asshole in the car ever. And I was like, I'm not riding with you anymore. If you act like this. And I'm like, what if that's our daughter one day learning to drive? What if that's an old man coming back from visiting his wife in the hospital? Like you get to decide if is life happening to you or for you, right? You don't get to play the victim in your life. That's a choice. That is an absolute choice. Um, I remember like not too long ago, I don't drink coffee anymore, but I drink tea and my children 
love Starbucks, like just whatever the hell I'll get them from there because they think it's so cool. Right. Someone introduced them to Starbucks once and I'm like, I hate them now, but you know, like if it's just some, whatever it is, but ever, but I tell you what, those little girls will do whatever for Starbucks. I'm like, you go clean the whole upstairs. Right. And I'll buy you Starbucks because it's cheaper than paying them. Right. That for their chores. So I go to Starbucks and I get, um, I get Sam a drink, I get Grace a drink, I get me a tea, and I get me a water. I don't know why I got me a water. I don't always do that. And I get out of the car, and my tea falls. Instead of being pissed off, I was like, thank God it was not one of my daughter's drinks, because then the shit would have hit the fan, and I would have had to have driven all the way back there, right? And then I walked in, and I said, at least I got my water. Like that, that's a choice. Your mentality is your choice. You have to make your mind your bitch. You know, I say that all the time. You have to be in control because you can find the negative in anything, any day. And it's easy. It's easy to, right? I don't think like you're a piece of crap person if you have ever done that, but you have to just choose not to. You have to choose to rise above that and be better than that. I would much rather something happen to me than like one of my kids drinks because you already know. Um, if you don't have a victim mentality, you believe that you are deserving of more. You believe that, you know, after each obstacle, you're rewarded instead of you're facing a shitty day. You know, if you face that day, then you're rewarded. And I don't mean like publishers clearing house is going to show up at your door and give you a check. I mean, you're rewarded with a lesson. You're rewarded with a different perspective. You're rewarded with a different outlook rewards can come in all shapes and sizes, but if you're a victim, you'll never see that. And I promise you, you'll keep being a victim over the same circumstances over and over and over again. Have you ever heard if God tries to teach you a lesson, he will teach it until you get it? I believe that. Oh my God. I believe that I had the same lesson for three years. And after the third go around with that lesson, I was like, okay, <laughs> I see you. This is your fault, Courtney, for putting yourself in those situations, right? Um, so the ups and downs, they're there. We know they're there. How are you going to respond to them? With strength or like a two-year-old? You, you spill your drink? Are you going to throw yourself in the floor? Or are you going to be like, all right, there's worse things out there? Like li literally, how are you going to respond? You have to decide right now. Failure is such an important um, ingredient in success. It's so important. You'll never be able to run a multi-million dollar team if you can't handle a no, if you can't handle um, somebody getting mad at you, if you can't handle a, an 80K walking away from your team. A lot of you are not at the next level because you're simply not ready. And I don't mean that in a rude way, right? That's not a bad thing. You're, you've got to realize where you are and keep going forward. But what lesson are you learning where you're at? Because, you know, I, I promoted really, really fast. And I've talked to um, a couple of my girls about this. And I'm like, if you would have promoted that fast and had to have dealt with as much, there's not a price tag for bullshit or negative vibes, in my opinion. Like, I don't care if you give me a million dollars, if you F up my vibe, like, I don't want nothing to do with you. And, and you, you deal with different levels come different devils. So you've got to figure out where you're at and what you're learning there. And it, it will come with failures and that's okay. The best part of you is undiscovered. Do you believe that? You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that the best part of you is undiscovered. You've got to believe and you've got to envision yourself. Like I think of me on a stage in front of 22,000 people. Three years ago, I was a victim curled up in a corner on my couch crying. The best part of you girls is undiscovered. And you have to know that and you have to believe that and you have to carry yourself with that. So how many times has almost or tomorrow changed your life? Never. It never does. You have to keep going. Opportunity is hidden behind every struggle. Every struggle, every obstacle, everything you come into contact to, there is a hidden opportunity for growth. You have to be sure that that's what you're looking for. And you're not going, well, this is a struggle. Well, I, I, mean, I almost promoted. I don't know. What did it teach you? What did it teach you? You know what? I lost $60,000 bonus one time because I was a dumbass. Made a stupid move in my back office. It taught me 
that it's okay, that you can still make a shit ton of money. It taught me how to prep my team. It taught me to be proactive. And so that never happens to my team. It taught me so much. <clears throat> it taught me I made it. I'm okay. I'm still alive. Um, so if you never leave where you are, you will never go anywhere. You're never going to arrive. You're never going to arrive at your next goal, at your, at your next milestone on this journey. If you see an obstacle and you just let it knock you down, you're stuck, you're frozen, you'll never grow. And, and if you never grow, your impact won't either and neither will your income. So you have to decide what are you going to do with these last 13 days of this month. I know what I'm going to do. I'm about to fill out my calendar. I'm about to put my head down. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to go make X amount of dollars. That's irrelevant to me. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to get busy and I'm going to get to work because two years ago, I had no idea that 7,500 and something women and men would need me. And I sure as hell didn't know that there was 22,000 people out there that needed to get healthier. But here we are. What's it going to look like in two years for you? I'm no different than you. I am absolutely no different. I am not any more capable, but I am disciplined. I am very, very disciplined. And I show up every single day. But you can control that part. So what is it going to look like in two years for you? Are you going to be about to enter the Millionaire's Club? Or are you going to still be a victim? Decide today. Don't let another day go by where you are playing the victim or you are playing it safe or you're not showing up and putting one foot in front of the other. Okay. Y'all have a great Sunday night. Um, I will see you on the opportunity event tomorrow night. I love y'all. Bye.